visiting one of the best distilleries in the world. Fortin SA. The rum of Paraguay. Nowadays, rum is traditionally from the Caribbean because sugarcane flourished in its lands as in no other place. But further south, there is another country with a favorable climate, water and soil for the cultivation of sugarcane, whose rum has been winning international awards. For this, we decided to go to Paraguay to visit the city of Piribiboy, a historic city located 73 kilometers from the capital, Asuncion. Its subtropical climate with average temperatures ranging from 12 to 32 degrees centigrade, its vegetation, streams, and abundant water circulation throughout the year make Piribiboy an ideal place for planting sugarcane. Here is located the distillery Fortin SA, a company of the Diaz de Vivar family with more than 25 years of experience, which in 2016 won the award for the best distillery in the world at the International Rum Conference in Madrid. For those who associate the word rum directly with Caribbean rum, let's start by clarifying that rum is a distillate made from sugarcane produced from the fermentation and distillation of molasses or sugarcane juice or from the honey of sweet cane. The type of rum produced by Fortin is made from sweet cane honey, known in Paraguay as Caña Paraguaya. But what is the difference between Caribbean rum and Paraguayan rum or Caña? If we talk about Caribbean rum, we can say that it is the one that uses molasses, a byproduct of the sugar industry. In other words, Caribbean rum is the result of distilling the liquid left over from the extraction of crystallizable sugar. The Paraguayan caña is obtained from the distillation of sweet cane honey, which is made from the concentration of the green juice or must that is extracted by crushing the sugar cane plant. By the way, this sweet cane honey is also used to elaborate typical Paraguayan desserts. So we could say that consuming Paraguayan rum or Kenya is really like consuming a dessert. This Kenya is a drink with a long history. It was already manufactured in the times of the Jesuits in the first half of the 18th century. During the Great War of the Triple Alliance, Paraguayan soldiers were given Kenya to resist. General Francisco Roa had stated that the Kenya should be honored for the services provided to the army. When we are hungry, Roa said, Kenya. When we are sick with cholera or diarrhea, Kenya. When we are sad, Kenya. And when, finally, we want to increase or excite our warrior spirit, Kenya. In fact, the Kenya came to identify Paraguay as tequila does Mexico. In 14 SA, the entire production chain is unified in one place. The agricultural sector with its own plantations, the artisanal sector with the production of pure sugarcane honey, and finally the industrial phase with fermentation and distillation. With almost 800 people working directly and indirectly, complete traceability of all processes is achieved. The crop is grown on approximately 1,500 hectares of our own land, 70% of which is harvested by hand. Yes, you heard right, 70% because harvesting by hand is beneficial for production because the plant is cut whole and therefore has a greater resistance to bacterial attack. This would not happen when using harvesting machines. The crop yield per hectare can reach up to 120 tonnes, which is twice the yield achieved at the national level. The plant takes approximately 12 to 14 months to bear fruit, but with the cultivation of three varieties, early, medium and late, 
harvesting can be carried out throughout the year. While we tour the orchard, which is self-sustainable, a worker suggests us to chew and taste the flavour of the plant in order to feel the sweetness of the juice. And for those who want to delve even deeper into the secrets of rum, he even proposes to feel the taste of the soil where it grows and even the smell of the plantations, since all this plays an important role in the construction of the aroma patterns that will appear in the drink. With the fresh harvest, we approach the industrial plant, a truly privileged place due to the surrounding nature where the delicate product is finished. Here, the bales of sugarcane arrive, which are first washed to remove the remains of soil, and then passed through a series of mills called trapiche that extract the green juice or must from the stalks. Yes, this is the green juice that we recently tasted when chewing the plant. This green juice goes through a filtering process and then is mechanically transported to open kettles at atmospheric pressure where the effect of fire and heat removes part of the water. This liquid must caramelize just enough to give it the bouquet. What results is sweet cane honey which is a fluid with a higher concentration of sugar and a caramelized flavor. The honey is then diluted and fermented in the large fermentation tanks. Yeast is added as well as improved yeast strains to transform the sugar into ethyl alcohol, that is, ethanol and carbon dioxide. The quality of the yeast used is important because it contributes to the final flavour and aroma profile of the finished product. The natural fermentation process lasts between 60 to 72 hours, resulting in a sugarcane wine of 6 to 8% alcohol content. This wine is then distilled in copper columns. The objective of the distillation is to separate the alcohol from the water present in the wine as well as the elimination of the impurities present in the alcohol until a strong canya or white canya of up to 70% alcohol. Subsequently, these 70 degrees will be lowered accordingly to the alcohol content of the final product. Then, we head towards the first cellars. And as we get closer, we feel that appealing aroma of Kenya that becomes more and more intense. As we enter, we see endless casks placed in series and well organized. On the one hand, incense wood casks, and on the other, stainless steel tanks. In this cellar, liters and liters of rum are unloaded. Those that are deposited in the stainless steel tanks are kept intact since this material does not transfer flavour or colour to them and later they will be bottled as white rum. While those that are deposited in incense wood casks are stored for 12 months to become the variety called La Añacada Especial. Incense wood is a native wood of Paraguay. Although its storage is in wood, this rum cannot be exported as aged rum because it should be matured in oak wood. It is, however, the most popular Paraguayan caña. The quality of distilled rum improves through certain natural physical and chemical changes that occur during maturation in barrels. Rum absorbs tannins, flavour and colour from the wood and, due to the porosity of the wood, allows the rum to breathe, causing complex oxidative changes in its chemical composition. We head it to the next four cellars where all the aged rums are stored. Once inside, the penetrating essence of the rum, along with the grandeur of the space and the amount of barrels stacked, generates a shock to the five senses. The space is ideal for storing aged rum, thanks to the temperature and humidity of the place, 
the construction made of cold stones and the nature present in this natural space. For its premium runs, Fortin chooses to use American and French oak barrels. French oak would be even more premium for the line because it is a wood that takes 250 years to harvest, is more aromatic and undergoes a slow toasting before the rum is stored. Fortin chooses the medium toast because it gives the rum a vanilla and smoky flavour. The oak wood, apart from adding aroma and flavour to the rum, also gives it colour. But that does not mean that they will all give uniform results. Each barrel is unique, so caramel is used to standardise the range of colours of the different rums. We are looking forward to the moment of tasting. For those who enjoy delving into the exciting world of detailed perception of scents and flavours, will appreciate that the content of each one of them is diverse in colour, taste and scent. Identifying their characteristics depends on our palate, our sense of smell and our way of receiving them through our eyes. We tasted six varieties of the most popular rums. By the way, and before starting, never put your nose inside the glass. The Añejada Especial is an aged rum. Young, has a light golden colour and a smell and taste of incense wood. Ideal for use in different cocktails, as in this case, the bartender uses it to prepare a peach daiquiri. The Etiqueta Negra. This rum, known as Etiqueta Negra, is aged in American oak barrels for eight long years, which give it a superior flavour and bouquet. Winner of two bronze medals at the International Rum Conference in Madrid. It offers a caramelised and softly sweet entry, enjoyed neat or on the rocks. Its soft variety is sweeter and lighter due to its lower alcoholic content. Ideal for use in mixers such as the rum and cola mix known as Ron Cola prepared by the bartender. The Etiqueta Blanca is a semi-light-bodied white rum, especially for the preparation of fruity cocktails or tropical drinks. We tasted it on this occasion in a cocktail known as Mojito Guarani. Forty makes different additional varieties of this white rum, among them one with natural coconut essence, with which today we tasted a delicious cocktail known as Ron Coco although the cocktail par excellence is normally the pina colada. Another variety with lemon essence with which we tasted a capiron. Diaz de Viva Añejo was developed to satisfy very demanding palates. This rum, aged in oak wood for nine years, offers a final taste of caramel and a hint of toasted oak. It is a full-bodied rum with a balanced flavour. Don Gustavo Diaz de Viva is an extra-aged rum aged for 12 years in French oak barrels and then aged in Pedro Jimenez wineskins for six months. This gives it a unique and sweet scent. A taste of raisins conjugated with the notes of oak wood. The Heroica is a rum aged in American oak for eight years 
that has the particularity of finishing its aging years in barrels previously used in Imburakaya liquor, which gives it a light and subtle flavor with a final citric aroma and at the same time sweet. The presentation honors the history of Paraguay, the Battle of Piribaboy, as well as the nature of the place. Undoubtedly, excellence and quality are perceived in the tasting of the beverages, and international awards confirm that Fortin's Paraguayan Kenya belongs to the best rums in the world. <laughs>